Tom Hill, it's Tom McKee. Hi, Tom. What can you tell us? Hi. What's the update? Well, Steve, we do have a, quite a bit of new information right now for Grant County. I'm standing right at the I-75 interchange with Route uh, 166, exit 166 here. And with me is Richard Willoughby. Richard is the Emergency Management Agency Director for Grant County. We have some new data here, some brand new data you just put together. Talk about first about injury. What do we have in the injury situation here? Basically, our reports and everything we've gotten and gathered, we've had three people injured total. Uh, one of those was transported to an old Kentucky hospital. The others were very minor. is there were no fatalities in Grant County per se. No, fa no fatalities in Grant County at the Harvester subdivision. No, sir. Talk about the preparedness then. We basically have had a response from uh, fire departments, emergency management people all over northern Kentucky have come here. You had a lot of warning. Talk about the storm as it came through what was going through. What well, going on. well, basically we have the weather station, the TV stations are people in the county of Prize. Uh, the dispatch center was working with the National Weather Service. We have the, the weather sirens here locally. We have idea of this happened during the daytime, so that had to help a lot as opposed to a nighttime tornado. Well, that's exactly right. It was early in the afternoon or late afternoon, so obviously people were probably more aware and paying attention. And, and it had been on the news all day about these impending storms, so uh, we were all prepared. We were watching for it, trying to keep an eye on it throughout the day. Talk about damage then. You've done some structural assessments. You've had inspectors in. Uh, give us a box score. Yes, sir. We've had the building inspectors from Grant and Boone County here to help us with our damage assessment. With heavy damage. We had five multiplex apartments that were uninhabitable um, and basically we're still without electric in this immediate area uh, at this point. The idea, obviously, harvesters lay in the apartment. That whole complex was the hardest hit pretty much. Uh, Bailey, uh, Barley Circle had that biggest damage. When you looked down there, when you went down Barley Circle, what were your thoughts? Uh, just a tremendous amount of damage. Um, like I said, we, we don't have a lot of that kind of thing here in Grand County. We've been very fortunate, but What's the biggest need going forward? What's the plan for going forward when daylight hits? Uh, in the morning, we're going to work to get the roadways cleared up better so that obviously we can assist the families to get back in and let them start gathering up their belongings and that type of thing. We want to get them in there as quick as possible so we can let them get their, their personal things out. Richard Willoughby, the Emergency Management Director of Grant County. Thank you for that update right now. We're going to go now to Darrell Link. Darrell is the Judge Executive of Grant County. And the idea of the preparedness for Grant County, you folks obviously uh, work very hard at that. How did it come to fruition today? Well, it, uh, it was absolutely wonderful. I, Rick and I had communicated before the tornadoes actually reached Grant County. Uh, I knew that he was going to be on site, ready to react wherever it may hit. Uh, he's done a tremendous job coordinating all the uh, resources that we have available to us, not only in the county, in the city, the state, adjoining counties have called as well. So the response has been tremendous. Everybody knew the storms were coming. When you first got that call saying Crittenden has been hit, yeah. what were your thoughts? Well, you know, my initial thought is who was hurt? Was, was it, were there any uh, fatalities? Was anyone hurt? Our hearts, first of all, go off, go out to the people in Kenton County. We do understand there were some fatalities in Kenton County. Our, uh, our hearts and prayers goes to those families. Luckily, here in Grant County, I think we had some minor injuries. It's my understanding that those people were treated and released. I'm not sure where their whereabouts are right now, but I'm glad to know that they're back returning to families. Talk about families that have been displaced. Right. Very few have gone to the shelters, uh, Sheriff Mills was telling us. That's right. There's a shelter at the Grant County High School. So much need them. It is. We, uh, Grant County High School, if someone needs shelter this evening, they go there. Uh, currently, we think we have 25 people there are displaced from their homes. We have 100 volunteers there trying to meet their needs. Just the idea, we've got a lot of damage. We have darkness right now. We have no power. How do you keep things secure overnight? Well, uh, we've called National Guard. Uh, we hope that they're going to be here at any moment. Currently, we have a, a tremendous force here with the Sheriff's Department and the State Police. Uh, they, they, are, they have checkpoints out here on the main highway. We also have checkpoints going back into the subdivision. Uh, you know, they're dead end streets, and so you have to get past those checkpoints. And then we have officers back there making sure that uh, those people's homes are secure while they're away. The idea of this happening in Grand County, where you're the judge executive, you're the administrator of the county, your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are, is these, these emergency personnel, uh, a lot of them are volunteers standing here by, behind me, and they have done a tremendous job reacting to the needs of these folks tonight, and I couldn't be more proud. 
amount of uh, these emergency workers. Now, going forward, what's the biggest need? What do you want the public to know? What do you want the citizens of Grand County to know? You might not be able to find out about it without power, but what do you want them to know at this point? Well, I want them to know right now that uh, that I'm proud of all the citizens of Grand County. Again, having 100 volunteers there meeting 25 people's needs, that, uh, that shows the heart of our community. Uh, we're in good shape, we believe. Rick's done a tremendous job, as always. The spirit of uh, Grand County, you can see it around here. The people. If you talk to some of the people that had their homes damaged at all, and if so, what did they told you? Yeah, I have not, uh, I have not uh, spoken to any of the families yet, so I don't know who they are. What's the message to the public uh, tonight? The message to the public tonight is, you know, I'm glad everybody's safe. I think we dodged a huge bullet. Uh, there were no fatalities, not uh, major injury, and uh, we'll, we'll build back. The idea of taking a look at what you hear, lessons learned. That's the update right now. It's uh, very good news. Just a uh, dozen and a half buildings damaged, three people injured, minor injuries, no fatalities here, a lot of damage. The power is still out. That's the main problem. Of course, with these temperatures dropping tonight, many people probably wouldn't be, have a bad idea to go to that Grand County High School. At last count, Sheriff Chuck Dills told us maybe two or three families have gone there. Everybody else is being taken care of, perhaps by relatives, neighbors, friends, coping through this cold night the best way they can. Live from Crittenden. Thanks, Tom. And